Today I'd like to talk further about the V6 and how it came about. And there's a V6 HD 185 and 200 amp hour. Uh, they are prismatic, but I also want to talk about charging profiles on lithium particularly. Um, now the transition between the V5 and the V6 is quite a, a big jump in chemistry. The V5 was NMC, uh, so that's nickel, magnesium, cobalt, and the charging profile on that was 12.6 volt. The LiPo4 prismatics as we have here, the V6 HD, these guys here, uh, hybrid, dual, or heavy duty, they are 14.6 profile, so they'll charge at 14.6. When you unplug them, they'll drop down to say 13.3 and run through the cycle over 12.8. Uh, so they'll maintain the higher uh, voltage throughout the cycle. So all of your uh, voltage sensitive equipment like fridges and so on and so forth uh, will like these, these units here. So one of the uh, questions people have is, can I use my V5 charger on the V6? The fact is you can't. The reason being is that the V5 charges at 12.6 and these require 14.6. So we've had people ringing up and say the charger's not working and we go through a number of questions and so on and so forth and we find out that using a, a V5 charger on a V6, two different chemistries, two different charge types. Uh, so you cannot use a V5 charger on the V6 and vice versa. So these guys here again, LiPo4 Prismatic uh, and 14.6 uh, profile. So the V6 came about because we took the feedback from customers. Customers always want more. They want more power and they want to run more things. So they want to run microwaves, induction ovens. Uh, they want to run coffee machines and blenders and these types of things. You can run them on these because we now have added on a 100 amp constant output on the 105 amp and a 200 amp constant on the 200 amp hour unit. The 105 unit you can see here, it does have the battery poles on the top. You can see over here, these are added. So they're a 100 amp constant output. They do come with the fittings for these. Um, you want to be running the correct gauge wiring, and that's another thing we wanted to say. So if you're running an inverter like this, you've got to make sure the cabling is correct. You can't just run a flimsy bit of wire from JCAR or wherever and just think that's fine. You've got to remember if that's going to be running a 1200 watt or 1500 watt inverter from that, it's got to be able to handle that capacity down the, uh, down the cables. Make sure the cables are rated correctly. You know, 100 amp, I'd go 120 amp, uh, they'd be about nine or 10 mil thick. Uh, to run your inverter properly. So 100 amp constant output, you could probably run with these a 1500 watt inverter, but do remember 100 amp is not 1500 watt, it's a bit less, so you still have to be careful and say, well, what's the rating of my accessory? So microwaves are generally say 1200 watt, 1100 watt. Um, you can get them six, 700 watt, which is fine. Your blenders are around 1000 watt for a, for a Ninja, for example. Um, then your induction ovens and your coffee machines, they can be up to 1800, 2000, depends on what type they are. You might have a, a two burner or say two plate uh, induction or one plate induction that may only use 800 watt. You still need to look at the accessory outputs, sorry, the requirements to run those accessories uh, and then make sure that you're not uh, drawing too much from the unit. Again, we've moved away from having alternative charge sources other than regulated charge. The V6 takes a regulated charge only. So if you're gonna have a solar panel, we suggest get yourself a good regulator, um, up to 50 amp, these take a maximum of 50 amp, and 50 amp is quite sufficient to charge these. If you're running a microwave 1000 watt for four or five, six, seven minutes, you've got to remember that you know in 10 or 15 minutes, if you're running 50 amp charge, it's going to put that power back in. So if you've got a 50 amp charge on one of these, it's completely fine. Uh, you'll find that you're never going to run out of power. A 100 litre fridge, for example, is only going to use probably seven or eight uh, amp, maybe nine amp when it fires up, when it gets cold, it's probably going to run it to one and three quarter amp per hour for 24 hour period. So 50 amp is plenty on an output. Okay, the outputs on the V6, you do have a 50 amp output here, maximum on these. Uh, don't mistake the fact when people say, oh, but you can pulse that at 100 and all these types of things. You've got to remember the actual plug itself is rated 50 amp. So if you see a Grant Anderson, a Great Anderson, and you get told, well, it can handle 100 amp. Yeah, it can, but for how many seconds? And I can tell you from experience, if you say to someone, don't run it more than five seconds, they'll run it for 50 seconds and wonder why the thing melts. It's rated for 50 amp, that's why they're 50 amp rated max. You've got a 50 amp output here. You've got two by 10 amp SIGA outputs there, which are 10 amp each, obviously. Um, then you've got the quick uh, USB-C down here. And then you've got your charge, Anderson, which is 50 amp. Regulated charge only. You must have a regulator on your solar panel or you must be using a regulator in your vehicle 
We have our people direct connected to a vehicle because they've been told by the oil electrician that the alternator is a regulator. It's not. In, in respect of charging our batteries, you must have a regulator between the car and the battery. Okay, so it's going to be a DC DC so that it stabilizes the voltage and the amperage is going in and gives it a nice steady charge. They do come with Bluetooth. So these guys here, uh, they'll connect to your phone automatically. Um, they have a serial number that will come up on your phone and match a serial number on the side of the unit. LED screen here, and the LED screen will give you all the information like the current charge, the voltage, um, the temperature of the unit, the temperature of the cells will also tell you the, the charge rate that it's currently, uh, currently getting, so in and out, so charge rate and also discharge rate. It also gives you the percentage of the battery being full or empty, uh, etc. So that will come up on the phone. The great thing about these is then you don't need to have a separate battery monitor. So you, you find that a lot of people have their battery management systems and then they'll run a monitor at the front of the vehicle. And that's hard wired through the car. So, you know, you've probably got three or four hours of wiring and plus the expense of that and labor to put that in. With the Bluetooth, you simply pick your phone up and click on the smart daily BMS. It'll come up and give you the, all the information on there. You should be able to see this on the tutorial or previous tutorials. So I wanted to cover off a few things because we are still getting customers that are using uh, the wrong equipment to charge their prismatics or using other chargers and so on. Use a charger provided. These do come with a 10 amp AC DC charger. And we also do have, still like we had the V5, these are plug and go. So you can have this as a cigarette, plug into cigarette socket and then plug it into this and you can charge it. And we do recommend it only 5 amp. That just allows you to trickle it. 5 amp still, if you've got that running in the vehicle and you've got a 50 litre fridge, it's going to be putting in what's coming out from the fridge. So, you, you know, these are really quite valid to have. Um, and that's the, the 5 amp one there. And that's a 14.6 profile. Again, make sure if you're getting an aftermarket uh, product DC wise, make sure you don't get told by a salesperson that, oh, this will charge anything. And so it's got to be the right charge profile. So the 14.6 profile is what these are. As long as you get one of them, uh, then you're okay. So Bluetooth, and then also what we do have with these is the installation tabs, which are removable, and they do come in the unit as well. So there's four tabs. You can see the screws inside here. So they're on either side and the bottom. So you can have four screws, sorry, four tabs. Uh, you might only want to use two, and you might use three. You could use four. But the fact is they are removable. You can also have custom brackets. So a lot of our clients... Uh, do make custom brackets as well. By all means, talk to them if you want to have something custom made so you can keep it slim, etc. You can take the, the handles off as well, and there's actually two screws here where you can see the Allen key, and you can make a bracket off that. So there's really more than six fixing points on these units, and you don't have to spend any more money on brackets if you don't want to. So the addition of the brackets and also the 100 amp uh, constant output, which means it upgraded to 100 amp BMS. The other thing I will point out is the Anderson plugs here, they are bi directional. So you could actually fully charge the unit, and if you're out and about, you could use both of these uh, as outputs. So you could run two fridges, although I would say the easiest way to run two fridges, which is what I do, is just get yourself a Y lead. Um, you can get in contact with us with you saw these. So they're a Y lead. You can run two fridges off this. You might want to run your fridge. You can might you might run you know another product off that. But remember, they're also 50 amp. That's a 50 amp out. If you've got two of these, I know it sounds straightforward, but you can't run. 50 out of each of those and just think it'll be okay because that's drawing 100, that's rated 50 amp. Okay, simple things like that do where, is where people come apart and they do do it. So again, what's the output and don't go over the ratings. So that's these guys there. So they do have self-protection, so revert, reverse polarity and dead short protection, those types of things there. They do come with three years warranty as well and uh, they can be lied down. These are only 61 mil thick. Um, 500, uh, 530 in, in length. So they're still very, very slim. And what we did was listen to the customers when we were exposed, etc. And that's what they really wanted. They wanted to have something to run an, uh, an inverter off. The other question we have is why don't we have inverters inside? You would have heard me talk about inverters before. Um, I do like inverters, but I don't like inverters that are enclosed in another product next to a battery because inverters do create heat. Inverters have spinning parts and when they do create heat and you've got something inside there, inverters do fail and the reason they fail is people overload them consistently. People do not read what the wattage is or they don't know what it is and they'll plug in you know, a 3000 watt product into a 600 watt inverter for example and then wonder why the inverter fails. And they will ring up and say the inverter failed but they don't realise that they've overloaded it. 
So if you've got an inverter inside another unit like this, then your unit's gonna be a warranty all the time or you're gonna uh, have to replace the unit because you've actually overloaded uh, an inverter because you inadvertently didn't read the instructions. Again, the instructions do come in the units, please read them. Instructions are online at nomadpdu.com.au. If you need instructions for the V5, um, a lot of people now um, uh, are handing on their V5s. They might be getting a bit, bit older now, three, four, five years old. They're passing on the V5s to other people, but not the instructions. So the instructions are online. Make sure that if you're selling a V5 to somebody else, that they go online and get instructions. It's not something. It's not something you just give it to somebody and then they're going to make it work perfectly. They will have run into issues because you've got regulated, unregulated, and you've got different loads, uh, charge rates, and outputs, and they do need to be followed. The ratings are on the product if you do read them. And the reason we have on the back of these, we've got all the instructions on the back of the V6. So if you do lose instructions, just turn the unit around. You can see the instructions on the back. Although if it's installed, you won't be able to see them. But again, once you install these with the tabs, you can simply unscrew them. Two screws here, take them off, take them off, take the unit out, and you can leave the tabs in the vehicle or wherever you also got these. If you've got four tabs, which you have in the unit, you might have two tabs uh, securing this in the same vehicle. You might use the other two tabs somewhere else, and then you can just take the screws out and move that to the next position. So they're still very portable. A little bit heavier than the V5, about 14 kilograms. But still very light. So they do come with again your AC DC charger, 10 amp charger, um, and they do come with three year warranty. You do have accessories like the uh, the DC DC, SIGA DCs. You do have, and we do suggest if you're going to use the DC DC, uh, and you are doing some hardcore four wheel driving, off gridding, etc., then probably use the DC DC with solar input. The solar input then goes into the DC. The DC regulates everything, and you can forget about it. And then it goes and charges the unit. One thing I will point out is with DC DCs is that if your unit goes dead flat, it is potentially possible that the DC DC won't pick up the, the slight current that's in the battery. So it's always handy to have the AC DC with you in case the DC DC you have in vehicle, because again, we don't make those. Uh, you might have a, 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 a Red Arc with Enerdrive or a Matson or a Trident. So again, it may not pick up when that's dead flat. But if you've got the AC DC, that doesn't care, you can plug it in and it'll pick up enough charge and then away you go and then your DC will pick it up. That's just something to remember. It doesn't happen very often, but it's just something to remember there. Uh, again, with these guys, the 10 amp charger is quite sufficient to be uh, charging uh, overnight, for example. And one thing I will mention is that never with any battery system or any batteries at all do you leave uh, the batteries on charge. When they're full, fully charged, there's no point leaving them on. There's no point leaving them on charge consistently for months on end. A lot of people put them in the garage, leave the charger on. There's really no point. Charge them up and then every six months just charge them up again. That's it. Um, you don't have to do any more maintenance with them. So it's every six months just charge them up, cycle them, whatever. Um, they do like to be run consistently. So if you want to cycle them uh, continually, then by all means do that. So you probably expect around 3,000 plus cycles. So you know you can expect three or five years at least. Um, you do get much more out of them. The V5 we're still seeing around, you know, after five plus years. So uh, again, nomadpdu.com.au. If you do have any questions, it's contact at nomadpdu.com.au. The V6s are available now. Um, if our partners don't have them in store, they won't be far away or they can order them in. They're usually 24, 48 hours away. Come to us directly at contact at nomadpdu.com.au and we'll put you in touch with your closest uh, retail partner and they'll be able to help you out, especially if you want to bundle things as well, like fridges and so on. Talk to them about bundling together. Um, and again, pick yourself up a V6, uh, 100 amp hour, a 200 amp hour. Uh, 200 amp hours do need to be ordered. Uh, they've been quite popular. So again, thanks for joining us. I hope that covers off a bit of the difference between the V5 and the V6. A lot of the advantages of the V6 is pretty apparent. Um, so they are a significantly improved product uh, for specifically the hardcore uh, four drive off grider. Um, or free camper as well. So it really covers everything you could possibly need. So if you want to run your inverters, then you can. But again, I will say, read the instructions, stay within the limits of the product. Thanks again, and uh, we will 